My name is Dr. Blair Kerner and I am the bassoon instructor at Syracuse University's Setner School of Music. So today we are talking about Sarabande by Claude Debussy. This piece was originally written for piano. The Sarabande is one movement from the suite, hence underneath the title it says Suite pour le piano, and it was later arranged for bassoon and piano. This is a very melancholy, nostalgic sounding piece. Debussy himself called it something that should be played rather like an old portrait in, a, in the Louvre, which is an art museum in Paris. So it's got this old, uh, nostalgic, melancholy, almost sound and feel to it. As you prepare this piece, there's a few things you want to be mindful of. Three things in particular that we will talk about today, as well as an incorrect note that we want to make sure we fix. All right, let's get started. The first thing we want to think about is the dynamics. From the very beginning, it says piano. And then we get a little bit louder with hairpins and then a down again, mezzo forte, piano. Then at rehearsal two, we've got pianissimos. So it does have this softer sound to it. But be forewarned, don't start this too soft. A few things might happen. One, the note might not speak within the first measure because you are playing too soft because you might be not using enough airstream. Two, if you play too soft at the beginning, you have nowhere to go later on to get even softer. So I would challenge you to play this beginning phrase at different levels of quiet. And then when it feels like it's super quiet, up the level a little bit, and that's where you should be starting. Because remember, you're a soloist here. So you still want to sing out. You are still going to be the main theme, the main line. It just has to be quiet, but not too quiet. I'll give you an example of what would be considered too quiet, 
And then I'll give you an example of what would be all right. All right, that's actually very quiet, but it sounds airy, it sounds weak. And honestly, I cannot get any softer than that. So later on in the piece, I won't have anywhere to go. It's a fuller sound, it's still quiet, but I have more place to go, and it sounds like the beginning of a phrase rather than I'm kind of timid or scared to start. So number one, think about your dynamics, I encourage you not to start too softly, and definitely always use your air for this. Okay, number two, breathing. This was not originally written for bassoon, so the pianists don't need to worry about where to breathe within the phrase. But as bassoonists, we do. Especially since this is a nice slow tempo at quarter note equals 60, it's gonna take a while for us to get through it. My tips around how to plan your breath. There's basically three things that you look for. The first are rests. Always when you can, find a rest first because that's a, that's a great place to breathe. In this case, we don't have a lot of rest. We have a three measure rest right before two, and then that's it for the entire piece. So obviously we can breathe at that measure, but we're gonna need to find alternate places. So check, we already figured out how many rests we have. That's where our first priority. The second would be look for longer notes that we might be able to cut short briefly to sneak in a breath. Longer notes could be a whole note, a half note, etc thinking about those slightly longer ones that we can breathe slightly. If it was straight 16th notes or straight 8th notes, we don't want to break a phrase that way. That's also very quick to try to sneak in a breath. So if we can, we want to prioritize the longer notes and cut them there. But of course, number three, we don't, don't want to cut random long notes. We want to make sure it also makes sense in the phrase. So you want to think about what the theme is and where it's going. So in this, there's a few places where it feels natural to then breathe after a phrase. Prime example is on the second line, the second measure. We have a fermata, so that's a long note. And it's the end of a phrase, as we know, because it is a fermata. So therefore, it hits two of our markers. We can definitely sneak in a breath after that high D. Wonderful. So I highly recommend going through and marking in, and you'll see in my version here, there's lots of markings, but the things that look like little commas are ways to remind myself, do not forget to breathe here. And it is important to plan your breaths because you don't want to run out of air and then just start breathing in random places and breaking up the phrase. So that's two. Number three, there are triplets in here, and then later there's 16th notes. We want to be very careful that they are sounding different. So, example here, at the very beginning, we have a triplet on B3. Da da da, triplet one. Great. On measure five, we have 16th notes. I will hear this piece and the triplets and the 16th notes start sounding closer and closer like they're the same thing. Remember, triplets are dragged out just a little bit, while the 16th notes are faster at the beginning so you can land on the 8th note. So just put them back to back. Here's the difference between um, the triplet and the 16th note. <laughs> So they're subtle, but the triplet, each note is given their own full value that's equal. In the sixteenths, the first two notes are sped up, and then the last note you get to sustain a little bit longer. Definitely practice going back and forth between these. Ask your teacher to listen in, ask a friend to listen in to see if they hear the difference, because you do want to make sure that they are distinctly unique. All right. The last thing we want to mention is actually an incorrect note. So, a little more than halfway down the page, after rehearsal number four, again, we have this long line that leads us up to a high D. 
you want to play this measure, which is the eight measures after a rehearsal of four, very exactly like what we had played earlier on on the second line, which is you want to play two Ds. In this case, it goes D and then it goes up to an E flat. That's actually incorrect. So you want to play two Ds. So it sounds something like this. Playing the same note twice. So, quick review about the Sarabande. First and foremost, don't play this too quietly, especially at the beginning. You're going to have to get even softer as this goes through, and you don't want to run out of opportunity to make it soft because you're already uh, very quiet or you're running out of air or you're running out of control. So make sure to be mindful of that. Two, plan your breaths. This is going to be a long haul. You need to know where you're breathing. You need to think about them thoughtfully so that they sound natural to the piece. Three, make sure there's a difference in sound between a triplet and the 16th eighths. Um, if they can get very similar sounding and the triplets start going a little faster, the 16th eighths start dragging out a little bit and then they start sounding very similar. You want to make sure these rhythms are distinctly unique. And then of course the last thing is don't forget that there's an incorrect note. All right, so that's what we have for the Sarabande by Debussy. Go pretend that you're walking through an old art gallery and look at portraits for this type of piece and go practice.